This is Weekend on the BBC World Service. Welcome to the programme. I'm Paul Henley. It's 620 GMT. A volume of poetry has been published called Uyghur Poems. It translates into English for the first time to poems in the Uyghur language. A Turkish-speaking, largely Muslim people, the Uyghurs have their homeland in what is the Xinjiang province in the northwest of China. There are multiple accusations against the Chinese government of cultural genocide, claims the government completely rejects. The poetry collection seeks to bring to a wider audience the stories and voices of what may Uyghurs, of what Uyghurs call East Turkestan. The BBC's Michael Rossi takes up the story. Our iron spears will be a forest. Livestock will roam on the hunting ground. Let the rivers and streams flow. The, sun the silence is swiftly deepening. Faster than the light. Shocked, I hold my tongue. I try not to mention the wild pigeon. My notebook is erased in white. But my pen is louder than a bowstring. Those words are from a poem by the Uyghur poet, Adil Tunyaz. The poem is one of more than 100, published in a new collection by Everyman's Library, entitled simply Uyghur Poems. The editor of the book is London-based Uyghur poet, translator and scholar, Aziz Issa Elkun. I believe it's uh, very important in these days when the Uyghurs as a nation systematically facing cultural erosion by the Chinese Communist Party. And also, Uyghurs are facing losing their cultural heritage, especially about their language. Now there is no Uyghur school or any kind of education using Uyghur language. They cannot read or understand or write in Uyghur language. One of the genocide, inside the general genocide, is cultural genocide also taking place. The accusation of genocide made by the poet Aziz Issa al Kun is one that several countries, including the US and UK, and human rights groups have leveled at China. The Chinese government completely reject these accusations and say that they are tackling Islamic extremism. The translations of the poetry in this book aren't the work only of one person, and Aziz was keen to involve others. One of those is Australia-born Monavar Abdullah, a scientist by profession whose parents and grandparents are from the Uyghur homeland. For a lot of the people like me who grow up mostly in the diaspora, accessing Uyghur literature is very difficult, and so this translation is not only for like the public, but also for diaspora kids who kind of want to connect with Uyghur literature and in turn Uyghur culture and history and so on, but can't really because of that language barrier. Cry wind for the anguish of stones and mountains. Cry wind for the hopes and dreams of falcons. Cry wind for the torment of the lovers. I will learn to cry, to cry from you. Some of the poems in this collection reflect the extreme difficulty facing artists in the Uyghur homeland. Adil Tunyaz, a friend of Aziz Isa El Kun's, was imprisoned in 2017. But before the crackdown, Aziz was able to see his friend. I visited him and then we had the dinner and uh, just before we left from the restaurant, he said, I have a present for you. He just uh, rolled one very small piece of paper and uh, he just held my hand and passed it to me. And I didn't look at it. And when I returned to my hotel, I looked at this poem. Finally, we met. First on the phone. Then, just as the dusk fell, a red taxi parked next to us, leaving no trace of misery, but a thorn was left in our tongues. But a thorn was left in our tongues. A poem by Adil Tunyaz, dedicated to translator and scholar Aziz Issa El Kun. For Aziz, with the restrictions placed on the Uyghur language, it will, in his view, be the diaspora 
that sees the language and culture preserved. I always travel to Central Asia, especially to Kazakhstan. We estimated more than one million Uyghurs lives in Kazakhstan. There's uh, more than 60 Uyghur language schools, and uh, there's a Uyghur literature course book as well for the children. And there's many magazines, newspapers, TV. So this is how we try as much as we can uh, to, to save or threaten the cultural heritage. Despite like this complete eradication, since books and novels and prose get destroyed, a lot easier, but poetry kind of remains. Translator Munava Abdullah ending that report from the BBC's Michael Rossi. World Service. (laughs) 